Okay, thank you very much for being here. Hey, hello, that works now. So hey, hi, I'm Timothée Ravier, and I work uh, for Red Hat as part of the Chorus team. I also um, help maintain the Fedora Atomic Desktops. And then uh, I'm Jean-Baptiste Ristram, and I work with Timothée on the same team. And right now we're going to look at how you can customize your operating system using containers, or in another way, how to start a project without building a new distribution. Because let's say you're somebody interested in Linux, Linux distribution, and you want to start a new project, and you want to build, for example, a customized operating system, a customized version of your system for your router at home or, for example, another a golden image that you want to have included with all the good default settings, all the good default tools, uh, the software, the specific software for your company that you want to run on your servers. Or, for example, you want to prepare a specialized environment for very specific projects which need special, specific development tools or things like that, uh, for robotics, for example, or, something like, or, or industrial projects or something like that. Or you want to create a gaming-focused operating system for a special type of handled hardware uh, that you can go around and drag and go around with it and play games on the go without naming any specific brand here. Or, for example, you can also um, write a lockdown version of an operating system or Linux system uh, that you want to use for a very specific use case, be it embedded, industrial, and all those things. So, if you go and look at all the things, you would say, okay, I'm, it's, yes, the new project is a lot of things. There's going to be a lot of things to look at and, 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 and watch out for. And for those use cases, you probably want to use what we call an immutable Linux distribution or an image-based Linux distribution. The idea is for all of those things, you want to have control of what's included into the system, how the updates are deployed, when they are deployed, because you're customizing things, so you're not going to be the, using directly the Linux distribution you're going to be based on, but you want to have control when the updates happen. You want to make sure that when they happen, they are safe for your users, safe for your projects, for the developers, for your system, they don't, that they don't break, that they can happen in the background. You don't want them to block the system from being used, so you want to make sure that the updates happen in the background. You want to make sure that they are to make, that they are safe to apply. And once you, uh, you have set them up, you can reboot into the next version. Uh, and if for whatever reason there's a bug in the new version and you need to go back to the previous version, be it you're live in the field uh, with your systems and you really, really don't have the time to debug a specific problem, you need to be able to go back to the previous version. And this is what image-based systems give you. It's these capabilities of being, making updates safe and make, making updates risk-free. Another side effect of using image-based systems is that you have confidence that what you put into an image is going to end up on the system. You know that every single system with the same image is going to run the same version of the software. You're sure about that. You don't have weird drifts or this version installed one package, this one another, or things like that. You're sure that everybody has the same thing. So here is an example. What we have in Fedora, we've been building image-based system in Fedora for a while now. Um, those image-based systems are based on OS3 as a technology. And uh, so, yeah, we have Fedora Core S, uh, Fedora IoT for all the Core S for server use case, IoT embedded use case, edge use cases. And for all of the desktop use case, we have the Fedora Atomic Desktops. So this is a new name. Uh, they were formerly called Silverblue, but well, it's still called Silverblue Kino White. Uh, but we have Sway Atomic and uh, Budgie Atomic as well. And so all of those image-based systems, they are based on OS3 because OS3 itself is extremely efficient. It allows you to have good image-based properties, so good updates. They are safe, they are atomic. You cannot break your system when you do an update. Even if you shut down, you pull the plug of your system while an update, you're sure that your system won't be destroyed and you will be able to boot it back up and try the update another time. Um, 
what, um, with OS3 comes deduplicated storage. So the idea is that when you do the update, you're getting a new version of your operating system. But it doesn't mean that you're going to consume two times the space of the system, of the files of the system. So OS3 is intelligent enough to deduplicate the storage. So when you do updates, it only downloads what is needed. It only uh, pulls on, down on the system the new version of the files. And it keeps everything that is the same. Uh, and it's one of the nice properties of OS3 is that it's not a fixed size uh, disk or fixed size image. So you can use the same uh, image, for example, Fedora CoreOS, if you want to boot it on a Raspberry Pi with a very small, uh, small disk, very small uh, SD card, and boot the same image of Fedora CoreOS into a cloud on a super large server with a lot of cores and a huge amount of disks. And so, yeah, there's no predefined pre pre size for all of those things, and it's what makes them very flexible. But with all of those, that's what we have right now. And we wouldn't be here if we weren't offering something else, something new. And the idea is that what we have right now is, is good, it works well, but we want to go further. The idea is that the impression for a lot of folks is that the image-based systems that we have right now with OS3 are difficult to customize. Whether that's true or not, it's it, almost irrelevant here. The idea is that it, it, there's this feeling that once you have an image-based system, you cannot touch it, you cannot change what it is in it. It's hard to configure, it's hard to deploy customized versions, it's hard to build new versions and all of those things. It's also kind of true because like once you have special kernel drivers, once you need to replace packages to get new codecs or things like that, it kind of gets messy pretty fast. Um, the fact that it's OS3 also goes into the fact that OS3 itself is not that well known for a lot of folks. It's a bit different from the classic uh, tools that we have. And repo management for all the content is not well known. It's similar to Git, but it's uh, different enough that it's not easy to get uh, always started with it. So it makes it difficult to share your images and uh, copy them offline and distribute them. And so it, it's always possible, but it, it's something new to learn. So that doesn't really help. Uh, and finally, Something that a lot of people miss is that our primary tree on OS3 system lets you change anything of your, on your system. It really gives you the freedom to change everything, but it's still something new to learn. And so that's tripping up a lot of people that get started into this field. Um, a lot of the time, uh, if you want to make those changes, you have to create an RPM. Uh, so that's one more barrier to, to, to cross when you want to make a change and things like that. Once you make those changes as well, most of the time those changes are local to your system. So if you have a hundred system and you want to make a change, you will have to make this change a hundred times on each and every system. So that's a local change. It may fail on updates. Uh, it will have to be reapplied on every single update. So that will take time. And that's probably uh, not always ideal. So, what do we have now? Well, if you've been uh, listening to the keynote this morning, we are introducing bootable containers and the technology around that. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So uh, who attended the keynote this morning? OK, that's good. So we have the prerequisite then. So I'll rehash a little bit, but so what are bootable containers? So this is a really standard OCI image as you know and love, but with a kernel and some initialMFS in there. And uh, when we build those images with OS3, the RPM the content is like distributed across the layers, so you get less in-flight uh, data. So that, that, that reduces uh, the size of updates. And then once the image is on the system, then OS3 or Bootsy uh, unpack the content of the image and then put all the bits at the right place. So set up the kernel, the initial MFS, and then the bootloader configs. So what's cool is it's like any other container any image, as, as I just said. So you can make change to, or, to uh, the image using a container file. I'm not going to say the forbidden word there. <laughs> and use any other container tools that you used to. And it's not limited to RPM packages. So RPM S3 allows you to make change on your system, but you need to package everything as an RPM. But there, in that container file, you can copy whatever you want, write any file you want. 
And then you have a nice image that is cloud native, so you can build it that in CI and then test in CI. And then for deployment, you only need a container registry to pull the images from any machines that you want. So that gives you a nice basis to make it your own without having to go to the steps of building a new Linux distro. Because obviously that's a lot of work, right? The, the federal release engineering is quite a bunch of packaging, CI, and, and, and so on. So integrating all of this, you can benefit from that work with just a one-liner, and that's really a one-liner, and it starts with from. So let's give a few examples. Uh, first, like a bare bones example, and then we'll look at how the Universal Blue project just uh, harnessed this power to make a really nice set of images for you to, to use. So building your own Fedora would look kind of like this. So that nice one-liner we have at the top, the from uh, OS3 desktops. So those are images that <laughs> Timote here nicely built for us, but we are in the process of making those uh, official. And then later on at some point, hopefully rebase them on top of the Bootsy images that were discuss discussed uh, this morning. And then you do anything you like, copy your VPN profile, because sometimes you have company VPNs profile that you need into your image. Uh, I don't know, create users, set up SSH keys, install some packages that you need on hosts. Uh, shell, some virtualization stuff, enable whatever, and then the infamous codec, right? Because everyone wants to watch some YouTube on their Fedora from time to time. <laughs> and then, at the moment, you just need to do the RPMS rebase on your already installed system, reboot, and then voila, you have your own, uh, your own image. Hopefully in the future it will be Bootsy, the, the RPM mostly we base will be a bit more hidden. So you have the whole cloud native workflow to do this. So you build your image using GitHub Action, GitLab CI, whatever tools you use to push that image to a container registry, sign it, and then you can get the OS update on your own terms. So let's say you've put some SSH keys into your image earlier before, you can SSH-V and then verify that they Image, the signature will be accepted and then everything works as, uh, as expected. <laughs> or you could, you could boot a VM with that and then do some more complicated end-to-end -end testing and, and so on. So there is one project that was briefly touched this morning that really uh, harnessed this, the, the power of those container files and it's uh, Universal Blue. So Universal Blue produced a bunch of uh, use case tell you tailored images, and this is mostly from container files only. <laughs> so uh, this is a screenshot I did just before the presentation, and you can see it's really pulling those Fedora OS3 desktop image that Timothy builds nicely. <laughs> and then uh, they do a bunch of customization on it. So uh, they have a few variants, uh, basically Bluefin or Raw, there's a, the GNOME and KDE version of them and then a Bazite OS that kind of look like SteamOS. And um, your core is uh, based on Fedora with a, with, with a few touches on there. And they have a whole CI setup that build and publish those images, and then this is a full cloud native CI. So that's the overview of the Bluefin setup. I'm not gonna go into the detail, but basically each box here is a, a GitHub repo. And then one of, one of the repo have the configs, the UDEV rules, this, and so on. One of the repo have the hardware enablement, so that would be out of three kind of modules, UDEV rules, some um, power, um, tuning for specific hardware. Think, uh, I don't know, your framework laptop has some specific hardware, you want to have the nice, the correct power profile for that, or the Steam Deck image, or so on. And then you take a little bit of each box, and then you get the matrix of all of those boxes gives you the images. So if I want you the rule from this, and then uh, KDE, and then an NVIDIA driver, and then 
all the copy from in my Docker file, and then I get the images with all the bits I like in there. So as they said, it's Fedora, but battery included. Yeah, I was, I was saying just before that copy from line, uh, that's the, the example. They also have some uh, nice to have like you dev rule for your two FA keys, so you be key work out of the work out of the box and so on. And then uh, we have some other example how about how the Podman team used the Fedora Core S to improve that stuff as well. Thanks. So who's been at the Podman five presentation this morning as well? Yeah, good bunch of hands. Uh, so if you've been attentive at what has been said there, uh, so for a while now, they've introduced Podman Desktop, which is a nice graphical interface to manage your containers and to manage Kubernetes environments. It's a graphical tool that works on all the major operating systems and for the ones that are not Linux, as Linux is containers, containers are Linux, uh, they use a virtual machine, what they call a Podman machine to run the containers on the systems. So Podman desktop looks like that. Uh, you can manage your containers, you can pull down images, push them, uh, you can start run containers, there's a few extensions as well to do different things, connect to registries. Uh, inspect them, uh, Kubernetes integration, OpenShift integration, and all of the things. And I think now they have added even AR Labs integrations. And so yeah, Podman desktop, it uses underneath Podman machine. So you can even run this on Linux, but of course it's mostly useful on Windows and Mac OS where you don't have a Linux environment. And essentially Podman machine, uh, it's based on Fedora Core S. So it's based on the container version of Fedora Core S, bootable container version of Fedora Core S. And it's derived using a container file. So everything that is added, changed in Podman machine, you can find inside of this repo where they have a nice container file which make all the changes that they need for the system. One of those is that Fedora Core S by itself, it ships with a specific version of Podman, but we don't include all of the version of Podman, we just include one. And for Podman machine, they wanna have the same version of Podman inside the VM and outside the VM. That's usually a good idea because that avoids weird bugs, or that globally simplifies the maintenance. And so that's what they do. They take Fedora Core S and they remove the thing that they don't need and get the version of Podman that matches the one that they want. So they can even go and test upcoming version of Podman on this uh, because and release them in advance uh, because they have control of what gets, gets pushed into the system. They also get control about when they do the updates. The idea is that they base this on Fedora Core S. Fedora Core S is an automatically updating system. We do releases approximately two weeks, every two weeks. But here at Podman Desktop, they can release those images on their own term, at their own pace for their versions when they want to do it. It's up to them now. So yeah, that's like another example of deriving a system using container files and getting something that you own and you control without having to redo the whole thing. You don't have to redo the whole system. You can base it on the work that is done as part of Fedora Core S. So that's two examples. Let's look a little bit at what's coming next. So we're working on aligning everything here. We've presented examples with Fedora Atomic Desktops, examples with Fedora Core S. Both of those projects right now, they are lagging a little bit behind the bootable container project, the BootC project. Uh, but we're working on aligning everything to bootable containers, to the technology that has been included there and developed there. So we have roadmaps for those projects, for Fedora IoT as well, I forgot to mention. Uh, we didn't have an example, but I think uh, there was another talk this morning about Fedora IoT and robot operating system uh, where they were using a container file as well to derive it and create their own version of it. Uh, so as we said, there's initial images of container images that are available for testing. So if you want to take a look at how this works, it's been pretty simple. It's what Bluefin uh, Universal Blue has been using for a while now, so it, it, it's working. Uh, and yeah, as I said, it's not fully in sync, but we're working on aligning everything uh, back into the same technology. So you can track those efforts here. 
one of those things that we want to align on, and one of the biggest changes that we're going to do is we're trying to move away from RPM registry and in some form move uh, to a combination of two tools, so Bootsy to manage the system and DNF to manage the packages. Normally, if you're familiar with RPM-based systems, Fedora, CentOS Stream, etc., you know that DNF manages RPMs. It's how you install your packages, how you update the system, and all those things. And we want the experience to be the same on those images, on those image-based system variants. Uh, and so, yeah, we would, you would use Bootsy to manage the, the actual system, the container of the system, and do the system updates and other things, uh, and, uh, and use DNF to do all the package changes. So, Right now, you can do, use DNF to install packages inside of a container file. It's the exact same experience as you would do on a, an application container. And uh, in the future, you will be able to use DNF to manage packages locally on your system, whether it's if you want to install a debugging tool or debug packages or install something that you, you missed uh, temporarily, uh, et cetera, before you add it to the next image, for example. So yeah, we'll. We don't have the full integration yet. It kind of works uh, if you know uh, how to do things in the right order. Uh, but we're planning on integrating all of that into DNF so that the experience essentially is very close to what we have right now with the classic systems, the package-based systems. So yeah, this is linked to a change for Fedora 41 where we are introducing this specific change. The second biggest thing uh, that we want to highlight is the work on ComposeFS. Uh, ComposeFS, I think Alec Laxon did a few presentations, uh, but not at DevConf, it was at FOSDEM, around how this works. The idea is that it's kind of a new kind of composed file system. It's not really a new file system, but it's composition of different features in the Linux kernel that lets you create a new way to view, to view your system and manage the storage. And so it's combining overlay FS, which is usually used for containers, and Eero FS, uh, which is a read-only file system. And so by combining that with FS Verity for integrity, you get super nice uh, properties for your system, um, runtime guarantees of the integrity of files, and at the same time, you get no performance, performance loss. It's, uh, it's very, very efficient. The goal with ComposeFS is to so move to using this to manage the system, the, the, the content of the system, uh, and at the same time use it as well for containers. So once we're able to use it for both the system and containers, you will get duplicate storage between containers and systems. You will get duplicate memory usage as well. So if you run the same containers, the same libraries in your containers as your operating system, you will get them one only once on the disk, and thus only once in memory as well. So the containers became kind of free with ComposeFS once you have this. Like spinning up a container is almost just the cost of the program you're starting, not duplicating all the rest. And so yeah, ComposeFS is kind of like the next step for S3 storage, and uh, and how we, we we would really benefit from having uh, this this new technology. So, yeah, we're trying to enable that in Fedora 41. It's the change request linked at the bottom. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's mostly it. If you want to go into more details, uh, if you want to get involved, there's plenty of stuff to do. Uh, we have very detailed roadmaps of all the things that we want to do. Uh, it's perfect time to join because uh, it's, yeah, it's full of things to do, um, full of excitement uh, at the time. And yeah, so I've had a link here about the Bootable Container Initiative that's been presented in the morning, uh, the issue tracker on Fedora side, the matrix signal that we have, all the related, related SIGs in Fedora that are taking part of it uh, on their own and aligning the images on what the Bootable Containers work has been doing. And here at DevConf, there's also a few talks. So the first one, it's the one from uh, the first one is from yesterday. The second one is from this morning. But you can still go at the container bird of feather. That's happening a few a few hours after. And uh, there's another one tomorrow about uh, around this kind of topics. And yeah, that's about it. Um, first, thanks, and uh, we're ready for questions.
So the question was, yeah, the question was how we could uh, remove packages from the underlying layer when we do a derived build of the container. So remove specific binaries from the image. Linux firmware package, in especially, yeah. Okay, I guess you have to use uh, smaller images uh, to begin with. Uh, I think the Bootsy like base image is supposed to be just kernel in FS and systemd, and then you, but you'd have to build everything on top of that and network and so on. Yeah, so there's only so much minimal that we can go. So you have the Bootsy base images, which are included a kernel, systemd, and all those packages. If you want something even smaller than that, then you have to build your own or remove things from it. Uh, but it's going to be the same idea. You can start with something. If you want to start something more minimal, you can use that and then compose, etc., with the container file. But yeah. It's more minimal than that. You, you will have to create one right now. You can remove stuff. <laughs> yeah, you can remove stuff, but then it uh, it doesn't really move it from the image. And if yeah, if you scratch this, all the different there's different trade-offs with it. So yeah. So is it possible to get an ISO image? Is that, is that the question? Yeah. So yeah, there's multiple tools uh, that allows you to take a container image and, uh, and output something in other formats. So usually you want to get disk images instead of ISO images. Uh, so one of them is Bootsy Image Builder that supports various, uh, various op output options. Uh, another one is Kiwi, uh, which we're working on to get you live ISOs or disk images, for example, as well. And yeah, I think there's something as well, yeah, as part of Podman Desktop that gets you uh, disk images. There was a demo at the keynote this morning with the Podman Desktop flow. <laughs> Do you mean what, when, so the question was <laughs> uh, that DNF will hopefully take care of the RPM 3 stuff and then the Boosty stuff as well. And then if you add out some other package, you ask if DNF would take care of updating that as well. So if you added package in the, uh, in the, in the derived build, then the packages would be added to the, um, This one? So, yeah, the goal is for DNF to take over in some form the, the tools, like learn how to manage image-based systems. So at first, you would probably use our industry I mean, like that, but then Bootsy, and ideally, if you, for example, want to install a package on top of your image, you either do it transiently, like it's only for this run, or you want to have it for every single next time you update. So you probably, if it, was, it will probably, I don't know, write a container file and do a local build for to keep it 
on updates or things like that, or maybe we'll do something differently, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little bit in progress right now, a little bit in flux, but the idea is that you still get this workflow that you can customize your, your system locally, but of course you'll still get the trade-offs. We, we want to encourage people to do this as much as possible on the image side, on the server side, in the container builds, but still let people change things locally for debugging, for any other reasons, or for whatever uh, you want. So if I understood the question, is it about merging rail cores with uh, image board rail or something like that? Yeah, the, it's, it's part of the ID. Like we have, here we present about Fedora and the roadmaps to converge systems on those technologies. And we have the same roadmap on the rail side, on the OpenShift side, where we want to converge Red Hat cores and all the similar technologies to what image mode rail is doing. So there's plans to uh, speed things there and converge on the same uh, base. Yeah. All right. Thank you.